Hello Summoners and welcome to another episode of ProGuide's OP Picker Ban, now on patch 10.14. These are the champions that are a bit overtuned for one reason or another, so they have the power to affect your games more than they otherwise should. In light of that, you'll be wanting to either deny their existence altogether or secure them for your own team. Before we get into it though, our question of the day is, what is your ideal 5 bands in solo queue? Let us know your answers in the comment, or you can even hop into our Discord to discuss today's questions with your peers. We have all kinds of discussions going on there about all of Riot's games, and it's a great place to meet new friends and teammates. Just click on the link in the description below. Now, without any further delay, let's begin. Darius is the first top laner on our list for patch 10.14. Darius is an almost unstoppable juggernaut in the top lane, axing his way through all kinds of matchups. It takes a lot to keep Darius down, and against his most common counter picks, ranged champions, Darius can take Ghost to just run them down. Ghost is getting buffed this patch, which means Darius will be even scarier. Now that he'll have an easier time getting in range, he'll be free to use his E to hook in victims more frequently. Once they're in, his auto attack and W cancel combo throw on some bleed stacks and add a slow so he can follow up with his Q's spinning axe attack to lay down more damage, more bleeding, and heal himself. On another note regarding Ghost, with the recent changes letting it extend its time duration with takedowns, it synergizes extremely well with Darius' ult execution. He can space jam one target with Ghost ticking, then proceed to run down the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. Once he gets rolling, there's no stopping him, so learn to use him or just keep him banned. Also benefiting from the recent Ghost buffs is Hecarim, our second top laner for 10.14. Hecarim Top is played as a backline charging bruiser who dashes in, disrupts the carries, then whirlwinds them to death while Conqueror keeps him breathing. Just like with Darius, Hecarim gains a ton of value from taking Ghost, since his passive gives him additional damage the higher his move speed is. Hecarim generally likes to start things off with his E, which lets him build up move speed as he travels, culminating in a charging attack. This lets him flank fights for advantageous angles and displace a backliner. Once he's in the fight, Hecarim starts to use his Q to helicopter damage out onto his enemies, whittling away at them and stacking Conqueror at the same time. This last bit is the most important, as it's the cornerstone of what makes Hecarim unkillable. Little in the game can stack Conqueror as quickly as a Hecarim in a team fight, and once his Conqueror is fully stacked, he can activate his W for the incredible healing boost it provides. It also does a mild DOT, but that's negligible in comparison to the healing. This combination makes Hecarim ridiculously hard to kill. He just keeps swinging and his enemies keep falling. To make things worse, his ult gives him even more mobility, as well as a formidable AoE fear to really get things going. We've seen Hecarim top a few times in the past couple seasons, and each time it resurfaces, it's devastating. So play it, ban it, or suffer. The top lane build should be back up on your screen now if you missed anything. Our first pick in the jungle for 10.14 is Nunu. Nunu is a tanky CC champion that excels in controlling objectives around the map and snowballing leads early. Literally. The cornerstone ability for Nunu and the not-so-secret sauce behind his objective control is his Q. Nunu's Q lets him take a bite out of any enemy, but if it's a neutral monster, his bite does true damage and a lot of it. In fact, for most of the game, Nunu's Q will outsmite his actual smite. When he stacks the two on top of each other, there's almost no one who can take objectives away from him. Almost. Nunu's W is his snowball, which is his primary ganking tool. He gets the ball rolling, builds up size and speed as he travels, then crashes it into his enemies to knock them up. From there, he usually follows up with his E, tossing out bursts of smaller snowballs at nearby enemies and then rooting them after a short delay. By this point, most enemies are severely wounded from Nunu alone, never mind his allies following up. But if his targets are still standing, he can start channeling his ult, a huge circle that charges up into a devastating ice blast, to finish off the opposition. Oh, quick bonus tip. If you're playing Nunu and you're really steamrolling the early game, try picking up a Magi's after your dead man's plate as a one-stop AP boost. Those snowballs start to hit different. Vi is our second jungle pick for the 10.14 OP picker ban list. Vi fills one of the more fun niches in the League of Legends roster, and that niche is giving people the hands. She's a brawler, and her kit does a great job of reflecting that. Vi's passive gives her a pretty decent jungle clear. The shield it offers keeps her relatively healthy, and her damage makes the clear relatively fast. 
She's not setting any records for speed, but it's respectable enough that she's not getting invaded by her average Joe. Vi's Q is a charged punch that lets her dash forward on activation, closing the gap between her and her target. Whichever enemy she collides with takes a decent bit of damage and gets displaced as well, opening them up to Vi's E auto-canceling combo. Vi can land one auto, then immediately cast E to start up another empowered auto that deals bonus damage, as well as dealing damage in a cone behind her target. This quick one-two punch is a great way to proc her W's armor shred a little faster than normal, so it's an important mechanic to be utilizing. Vi's ultimate is the most fun part of her kit, and takes all the guesswork out of punching someone in the face. You point, you click, you run that person down, uppercut them, then slam them into the dirt. You're unstoppable while all this is happening, so there's very little in the game that can prevent this from happening. It just falls into your target's team to form up around them and to try to peel you off before you can knock their teeth out. And here are those jungle builds for you to look at. Our first mid later for 10.14 is Zed. Zed is an AD assassin who wins games by deleting squishies and outplaying his opponents. As an assassin, it's Zed's sworn duty to flank fights and look for picks on vulnerable backliners. He's one of the league's more complex champions to truly master, but the reward is worth it. Zed's Q is a thrown shuriken that passes through enemies and does a decent bit of damage. Zed's E lets him do a quick spinning slash, damaging anybody nearby as well as slowing them. These abilities are decent on their own, but Zed's W is what makes them really matter. When Zed casts W, he sends out a shadow form of himself that copies his Q and E casts, so he has the potential to land two shurikens and two slashes. Zed can also switch places with the shadow form, so it gives him a method to escape or go in as needed. Making this exponentially worse for his opponents is his ult. Zed goes untargetable, spawns a shadow, marks an enemy, and then any damage he does gets stored up in the mark to explode a few seconds later. All in all, it's fun but hard to execute, so if you have dreams of being the ultimate shadow ninja, check out ProGuides.com and one of our coaches can teach you the finer points of Zed. Our second mid laner for 10.14 is Annie. Annie is a short range burst mage who can also apply a stun to win team fights and crush games. Her Q is a point and click fireball that does damage and restores mana if it kills an enemy. Annie's W is a cone of flame that fans out damage among multiple targets. As a short range mage, Annie's primary challenge is getting close enough to her opponents to burst them down, but her E gives her both an increase in move speed and a free thorn mail, letting her approach more easily to drop her ult. All this damage is nice, but it wouldn't matter nearly as much if it weren't for Annie's passive. Every four spells Annie casts, she charges up a stun that'll proc the next time one of her abilities lands. Q stun is for guaranteeing the stun on slippery opponents, W stun is for the AoE CC when Tibbers is unavailable, and Alt stun is for complete and utter teamfight annihilation. Choose wisely. You can peep these mid lane builds one more time, here you go. Ash will be our first bot lane carry for patch 10.14 since the heavy nerfs to Varus have finally kicked him out of the spotlight and made room for the return of the other lockdown ADCs. Ash has been fringe busted for most of the season, but she's been getting outshined by whatever other ADCs are just actually busted, like being able to remove a third of someone's health bar from a screen away. But hey, that was then, this is now, and Ash is back, baby. Ash is treated as a utility carry because her kit offers so much, you know, utility. Every auto attack slows thanks to her passive, her W is strong lane poke that also slows, and her Hawkshot's ability to track the enemy's jungler or even just their general rotations is extremely underrated. And all that is without even mentioning her ult, the global stun that puts her in contention for best initiating ADC in the game. She just has so much value packed into her kit, but even though she doesn't have the most latent damage due to being unable to apply crit damage, her Q's huge attack speed steroid makes it so that it barely matters. She stacks up the Q, activates it, and then starts pouring arrows into her enemies. Crits or not, that many auto attacks hurt, and when you wrap it up into the bundle with the rest of the utility Ash offers, it's easy to see why she's a front runner on patch 10.14. In a similar vein, we have Jin, our second bot lane carry for 10.14, another champion that excels in lockdown but was being overshadowed by Varus. Jin is a more bursty champion, and where Ash is incapable of getting crit damage, Jin gets a crit for free every fourth auto attack. The trade-off here is that he has to reload, 
but with all the heat Jin is packing, the reload is a small obstacle to overcome. During reload periods, most Jins like to use their Q's bouncing grenade to help them get any CS they might miss while they're unable to auto-attack. However, the skill has plenty of value as just straight up poke as well, or even a kiss goodbye on the end of an auto attack trade. Jin's W is a long range shot that roots its target if that target was recently damaged. This essentially functions as a limited Ash ultimate and is fantastic for making picks for his team to follow up on. Jin's W is especially potent when it's combined with some well-placed E traps. Jin's E places stealth traps on the ground near him, and any enemies that step over them are slowed and marked for his W. After a brief delay, the trap explodes, damaging any enemies unfortunate enough to still be stuck on it. As you can see, Jin's main kit has plenty of assistance for his team, but his ult brings that little something extra. Jin plants himself in place and takes four shots from his fully completed gun, dealing huge damage to any targets he hits as well as slowing them, even more so if the target is on the lower end of their health bar. This ability is of course useful for cleaning up fights, but its slow can also be great for starting fights if your team is in position, so remember to stay flexible with how you use it. Here are the bot lane builds for you again, take a look at those before we move on. Leading off our support picks for 10.14 is Lulu. Just like last patch, Lulu is still kicking butt and taking names, and she's all out of names, or however that quote goes. If you need enemies slowed, Lulu's got you covered. If you need allies sped up, Lulu's got you covered. If you need enemies turned into a squirrel or a cupcake or a snowman or whatever corresponding creature goes with your skin of choice, Lulu's got you, boo-boo. She can even shield her carries or hurt enemies, but most important, she possesses the go big or go home R button to make sure her carries survive. Just like last patch. In short, if you weren't playing Lulu before, you've been granted a time extension. Get going! Speaking of repeats from last patch, Bard, the man behind the meeps, is back at it again in 10.14. Very little is changing in the support role from last patch to this one, so that's why we're seeing both Bard and Lulu again. Just like in 10.13, Bard is still a support to be reckoned with, with well-placed Q stuns dominating lane phase, and his charged healing fountains turboed up by a fiend's helping allies no matter where he is. His chimes help keep him moving at a steady pace, and his ease tunnel lets him act like he's a second jungler. Bonus points if you perfectly balance your lane presence with your chimes and end up a level or two ahead of the other three bot laners. And his ult? Mm, one of the best initiation and pick tools in the game. Just like Lulu, if you weren't playing it last patch, play it in this one while the getting's still good. Since just giving you two repeats feels kinda lame, our third support pick for 10.14's OP picker ban list is Alistair, who just received a significant cooldown buff to his Q. Alistair is a beefy frontline support who excels at playmaking. He is full of CC that can be used offensively or defensively. For example, his Q knocks up any enemies in his immediate vicinity, so he can choose to use it to peel for his carries by simply knocking an enemy up, or he can use his Q in combination with his W's headbutt to start a fight for his carry to follow up on. Alistair's E point and click stun is solid lockdown in most situations, he just needs to be able to stay next to an enemy while it charges up. While plenty of supports can offer similar levels of crowd control in one form or another, what sets Alistair apart from the rest of the pack is his ultimate, a huge defensive steroid that makes him one of the finest tower divers in the game. Alistair can take turret aggro, pop his ult, and all of a sudden those tower shots hit like spitballs on Ali's chiseled physique. He's a great, well-rounded support who's been waiting for his turn in the spotlight for a while. He's here now though, so start climbing! And finally, here are those support builds one more time for you. Thanks so much for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed this video along with the rest of our patch 10.4 series soon to arrive. Once again, let us know in the comments which 5 champions you'd keep banned so we can hit you with the hot, fresh heart react. We really do love hearing from you all. Also guys, make sure to check out our Valorant and Teamfight Tactics channel if you're interested in improving at those games as well. We also have coaches at ProGuides.com to help you become really good at those games, so don't miss out on that either. That's going to be all for today, see you all next time, good luck out in the rift, and please, how many times do I need to say it? Just wash your hands, just do it. Ugh!